Mental illness is a difficult topic to talk about, but a former social worker tackled it in a creative way as a playwright. Dr. Clay Graybeal has written three plays loosely based on former patients he saw while working in a psychiatric facility. He's now a professor at the University of New England, and his latest play can be seen on stage in Brunswick. It is a thriller called Seal. We sat down with Dr. Gray Beale, Michael Rafkin, the director of the show, and Wendy Poole from the Theater Project, where the play is actually in its second week. The only thing I knew was I wanted the story of this uh, trauma survivor to be so powerful that it would break through the burnout of the social worker that, who, was, who was kind of burned out guy reaching out to her, and that that was the, the nexus of that story. Michael, he says, what do I know? But what did he know? He had great instincts. We were all, and have continued for 20 years, to be shocked that somebody without a, a real training in playwriting could come up with such vivid cam uh, characters and, and fun dialogue. Wendy, you acted in his second play. I did. And now you're helping put on the third here. Um, what should people know about Seal? Uh, it, what I love about it, Michael has called it a theatrical thriller. And we've been discussing <laughs> that it's Ooh. fun. You just don't see that anymore. You know, I mean, it's really on the edge of your seat, dark. Y you know, who is the bad guy? Who's the good I'm guy? Sorry. And what's happening? Hey, man, I'm, I'm sorry. It's OK. A little action now and then takes me back. He's a Marine. Yeah, he was. Uh, once you're in, you're always. Seal, I was inspired by the story of a young man who was admitted to the hospital where I worked at the time. And uh, he, he was having these dissociative episodes where he would lose time and forget what was going on. And as we interviewed him, he, he uh, said that he had been trained as a Navy SEAL and then trained as a specialized um, assassin, essentially. And so what happened was we were trying to figure out if that was true or not. We contacted the government. They said, not really. And we checked with him, and he said, well, what did you think they were going to say? And so everything else after that is my imagination. Michael, when you have something that's based on a true story, what is that like to direct? Does that add a complication on the stage? You do sort of feel a responsibility to, to get something right, and in this case, uh, we spent a lot of time and energy and used Clay's expertise around c clinical issues. And uh, despite being a thriller, it, it's, a, it's a really gripping play about patriotism and morality and, mm -hmm. and the whole the mental line. health issue no. in it's our culture, which is, is huge no. right now. That, that's a good, I'm glad you bring that up because you do tackle some very serious issues with your plays, Clay. What do you hope people take away from this? You know, I, I, it's interesting. I think um, one of the things with literature and with plays, we get to go to places that we don't experience in our everyday lives. So part of it is about uh, having that experience, going to those places, and the other is understanding uh, the complexity, the, the effects of trauma, the effects of political intrigue. Um, one of the things I say in my write-up is that, you know, for throughout history, old men have sent young men and now young women to fight their battles, and uh, sometimes um, for nefarious reasons, sometimes for mistaken reasons. Wendy, you mentioned it's very dark on stage, and it is <laughs> a creepy dark. thriller. Yes. What can people expect when they're sitting in the audience? Um, what I hope is they don't know what to expect. Y um, you know, who, who are we believing? What's going to happen? Um, I, I really hope people leave this and think that was just a fun, I didn't expect that to happen. It's on stage at the Theater Project in Brunswick through October 14th. You can find more information on the 207 section of our website and our mobile app. And when we return, a conversation with Marty Groman, an independent running for Congress in the 1st Congressional District. Stay with us.